As men marched off to war, women marched off to work. The result was a dramatic but temporary change in the workforce of every fighting nation. But of all the professions women entered, none was more important than shell-making. In Britain, one million women poured into munitions factories. 28,000 women worked here, on Warren Lane in southeast London. The Woolwich Royal Arsenal was Britain's largest. This, too, was a battleground. The first time you go around, you think, what an interesting place. Then the evil smell becomes more noticeable. The particles of acid land on your face and make you nearly mad, feeling like pins and needles. Gabriel West knew the dangers of working in a shell factory. She first ran a factory canteen, and then shocked her father by joining the newly formed Women's Police Service. Her assignment was to maintain order inside factories. The fumes often mean 16 or 18 casualties a night. You're blind and speechless by the time you escape. War work was dangerous, laborious, heavy, dirty. Women were, you know, blown up in powder factories um, in accidents with TNT, and there were several hundred uh, deaths on both on in both France and Britain. Um, just due to explosions alone. An exploding shell was a quick way to die. But there was a slower way. TNT poisoning. The first signs were like a common cold. Nasal stuffiness, headaches, and coughs. But continued exposure caused symptoms far from ordinary as a young worker named Caroline Webb was to discover. It was all bright ginger, all our front hair. And all our faces were bright yellow. They used to call us canaries. This doctor, he was looking at us girls one day and he'd say, half you girls will never have babies. And the other half are too sick. God help you. Seeking adventure, Caroline Webb had left her job as a dressmaker for employment first as a shell filler, then bullet maker. We were kids, she later said. We didn't bother whether we were blown to bits or not. Sometimes when we come upon our little train, it will be all packed with different people. And there'd be all the officers sitting there. Some of them used to look at us as if we were insects. And others used to mutter, well, they're doing their bit. We said, well, we don't mind dying for our country. One of the things that women gained as a result of going into the war factories, aside from decent wages, was um, recognition, a sense that what they did mattered, and that it mattered centrally to the most important thing that was going on at that time, which was winning this war. Winning the war 
required mountains of shells and bullets made by women. Some hoped that the new openings created by the war would continue afterwards. But when the war ended, so did most opportunities for the girls with yellow hands.